Hello and welcome everybody, Marcus Small here from the smallman.com. I'm going to show you today how you can convert text to numbers on the fly in VBA. Right, let's say we've got a range like this and traditionally we do something like this, convert to number. So you can see over here it becomes a specific number and if I press Control Z, watch what happens when we record some code. So if I hit the record button down here and I say, okay, let's record some information into this workbook and then we'll do exactly the same thing. We'll highlight this range and we'll convert to number. And if we stop the recording, Alt F11, go and have a look at what's actually being uh, done in the background. We'll go into modules, module one. You can see that all we've done is select the data. Where's the line of code? which converts the text to a number. It's not there. So we're going to have to go through the process and make this puppy ourselves. Now I press Control Z to undo that. You can see the text marker down the side so you know something's up with the data. Now if we're gonna do this manually, we'll just go equals that multiplied by one. And then when we send that fella down, everything's all good in the hood. But now let's say we wanted to do that programmatically, yeah? now. What we're going to do is much the same thing. Yeah, we're going to cut, go through the same process. We could use the value formula, but multiplying by one seems a bit faster in my opinion. Well, there's less typing. And lazy as sin is me. I just go for the shortest distance between the two. Now, let's go about doing that. I'll show you how to hard, I'll show you a couple of methods and we'll make them as flexible as we possibly can along the way. Yeah. All right, so let's go into the back end, Alt F11. And we may as well just use and abuse this particular macro. So macro three, let's call, give it a name. So we'll say sub uh, convert num or text. That's really what we're doing. Doesn't matter what you call it, just needs to be relevant, yeah? So what we wanna do is we'll hard code some ranges, yeah? So we wanna go get the data, uh, say from B11 to B22. So from the bottom of the range, or from the top of the range to the bottom of the range, yeah? So we'll square bracket B11 to B22, yeah? And then we'll say that is equal to, we'll open a quotation mark and we'll say uh, we need our formula. So that's gonna be A11, yeah? And then multiplied by one. Now I only have to make a reference to the first cell in the, um, in the range and, and Excel's flexible enough to push that through. Now I've forgotten an equal sign, so we've got to conclude that. So make sure and include that all in quotation marks and that will replicate exactly equals A11 multiplied by one. So that's effectively what we want to replicate in our code, yeah? Now it's telling me there's something, you know, there we go, there's the issue just there, yeah? So A11, I don't, of course I don't need quotation marks inside of my um, formula because everything's text, yeah? So that's the first part of the equation. Next part is I don't want the formulas to be there any longer. So I'm going to take this part of the formulation. I'm going to turn the cells to values afterwards. So copy, paste, I'll do it again, copy, paste, and then we're going to say that that range B11 to B22 is equal to itself dot value, yeah? And then I'll just tab these guys in, just so it looks nice and tickety-boo. And let's give that a whirl, yeah? I'll, we can see what's going on here. And we'll press F8 to kick it off. F8 and F8. All right, good stuff. And you can see what we've got is the... Ah, oh, the formula hasn't worked. What's going on? Oh, I haven't run that line of code. <laughs> so we'll press F8 again, and there we go. So that, that's how you do it. What a muppet. All right, good stuff. So we did it right. We just didn't run the code right the way through. So we'll press Alt F11, and we'll finish the code off. So I'll just stop it. And then let's make this guy a little bit more flexible. So we'll copy it, paste it. And what we want to do is we want to trap the last row. We we'll use row 11 as our banker row. It is sort of susceptible to error, but um, what we're doing, look, you're forever right. What I find is you're forever trapping code. Like you put as much error trapping is as you can. 
without just going like completely troppo, saying, oh, well, I've got another line of code to write. What, what traps do I need to put? Your code just becomes like just unmanageable, yeah? So just trap the big ticket items, and this is one of them, yeah? So we're gonna, we're gonna say that we start in row 11 and we finish in the last row in column A, yeah? So uh, let's put that in with a variable. So I'll dim last row as a long integer. And then I'll say last row is equal to, now there's a range of methods to do this. This just happens to be my favorite, A1048576. And then we go dot end. If I had a doll off every time I wrote this one, XL up, top row. Yeah, and that will trap the last row in column A. Now we can use that variable in the next line of code, yeah? Now, let's test the veracity of that. So basically, I've got the locals window open. If you don't, you can go view locals window. Yeah, view locals window. And then what that'll give us is the opportunity to have a look at our variables as they're coming into play. Yeah, so we'll press F8 to kick this. Oh, I haven't. Well, what's the point of kicking it off? It's, it's, it's as inflexible as the first one. So what we want to do is we want to say range here, open bracket, and we'll say b11 to b close quotation mark ampersand last row yeah and that is equal to this guy here yeah nice and then we'll steal this guy and we'll put him here and then we'll take that and we'll put it there yeah so now it's got a bit more flexibility yeah so let's Actually, what we might do is put it in column C, yeah? So it doesn't ruin what we've just done. So we'll change all these B references to C references, yeah? All right, so we'll press F8 to kick this guy off. So we'll press F8. Uh, I can't have the same macro twice. What a, what a fool. One, okay, we'll need to have a unique name. And then we'll press F8. Nice, F8. All right, good, good job now. So this zero here, this is going to want to change to 22. So if we just, if I can just get rid of that and then press F8 now, we see it goes to 22, which is fantastic. Now in the next column, we should have our formulas flying in. F8, there they go. And then we, oh, look at that. B becomes C, B becomes C, and then We'll press F8. That actually would have worked, but now it's actually all tickety-boo. So that's effectively how we get it in with uh, a very, very simple formula. This way is hard-coded. This way has got a bit more flexibility. It's all good in the hood. That's how we do it. If we wanted to make it more flexible or more sheet-specific, like there's only one sheet in this workbook. Let's go wild here and say there's two, three, and we want to sort of tag it into this particular sheet. Alt F11. Now, when I when I've written when I've written a line of code that need that requires a sheet reference more than once, I use a variable. Yeah, if it's only once, I don't bother. So we will dim sh as a worksheet, and then we will set the sheet equal to, and we go over here, we check out the worksheet code name, and it is sheet one. Now we tell people that that sheet is equal to the text nums tab, yeah? And then that gives that particular line some meaning. And now we just go sh dot, and then sh dot, sh dot everywhere we've got a reference just prefix it with sh got it there got it there got it there we don't need it there got it here it's all good so because we're using this on column c what i might do is i might remove this and we'll go over here and we'll run it from here yeah all right so let's have a look at what that looks like alt f11 to go back in the back end f8 to kick it off f8 f8 F8, F8. Now, once I press this, we're out. We'll go back into the text to numbers sheet. The numbers are back in there, yeah? 
So that's how to add even more flexibility to your code, yeah? And that's probably the shortest path between point A and point B, yeah? All right, well, I hope that's helped. I hope you have a fantastic day. Plenty more videos to watch, like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Have a great day, everyone. Take it easy.